chambers. Hey, remember I was just here 30 minutes ago or two hours ago, 50 people came in two hours. So that means there's people coming over. So, you know, that was one way for me to prospect. I got a lot of listings through there, but my forte was always door knocking. So just do everything. Don't follow a, a specific system. Track your number for six months. Just do it for six months and see where's the business coming from. So I'm going to go over the four ways that you could get listings. Um, I mean, four sources, and then we're going to get in details of what it is. I do call calling every day, door knocking every day, social media every day, and sphere of influence, right? Like I told you before, door knocking is what I'm good at, but I still call every day just because I want my name to be out there. My conversion is a little lower, but it, I just want people, whenever I call, a lot of people tell me, hey, yeah, you just door knocked my house like two weeks ago, you know? So that's just for you to create a reputation on the neighborhood if you want to specifically go, go into one neighborhood, right? So this is what I tell my team all the time. You're a real estate professional. You're not a marketing consultant. Actually, you're both, but just do it towards the end. When, you, when I go to listing appointments, don't talk too much about marketing, right? When in a, in, a, in a new era that they know what's going on in the marketing, I talk about real estate. And when I say I talk about real estate, whenever I walk into a listing appointment, I literally say, hey, guys, you need a 2810BC. Who knows what that means, right? For the most part, it's so simple to say it's a fire extinguisher that you need to see in the CEO. But if you tell that to a seller, they go, like, oh, this guy even knows the code of what fire extinguisher is, right? So when I go to a listing appointment, to be honest, it's been two years since I ever came with a listing presentation, two years, right? I'm gonna start doing it again. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I do, it could be right or wrong, but this is has what has worked out for me. I don't come on with a listing presentation, but as soon as I walk in, I look at the, at the railing at the beginning. Hey, look, you have a loose railing. You're not gonna pass FHA. So when I say that, they were, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. As soon as I walked in, I go directly into the kitchen. Oh, you need a 2810BC. They're like, what is that? It's a fire extinguisher. But if you say 2810BC, you sound a little smarter, right? And, and at the end of the day, that's the code that you need in order to get a CO, right? So if you see a, a small detector that it's you know, battery operated, for those who know, it cannot be battery operated anymore. But if you're saying all of this, most likely you're gonna get the listing right and there's somebody coming in and tell you, hey, I'm gonna take professional pictures. Most of the realtors are doing it. I'm gonna take videography, I'm gonna stage the property, whatever the case may be. For the most part, the good realtors are doing it. So you're not gonna stand out from another realtor who's way better than you, pretty much doing the same thing that you're doing, right? But if I come in and talk about the house itself, they're like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. The first thing that I do, as soon as I walked in, I look at the chimney because I know the chimney has to have a cap. Otherwise, you're not going to pass CEO. So as soon as I walked in, hey, I don't know if you noticed, but your chimney doesn't have a cap. So you should put it because even when we do inspection, they know you don't have a cap. They're going to check the liner. The liner is going to cost you $15,000 to fix, and you don't have it. So if you're giving all this information, 99% of the times you're going to get the listing. And like I told you before, it's been two years since I ever came with a listing presentation. But by me telling this, whenever I go to a listing, you know, I, for the most part, I get the listings, you know. Any question when it comes to this? It's clear, right? We, we, we know we got to do the right marketing. So don't come into a listing presentation as, as if that's your way to get the listing. You're a real estate professional where you should be talking about real estate. You know, it could be mortgages. It could be appraisal. So I talk about construction because pretty much I work with a lot of developers. So I already know, you know, what kind of materials are going on, what are the prices, what has to be done, or whatever the case may be. You have a question? Yeah. Um, you said before you still have like flyers going out. Do you have flyers for people or like? <laughs> to be honest, now, like right now, if I door knock, since my conversion rate is really high, I only door knock about thirty houses per day, if anything. But in thirty houses per day. Thirty houses per day. Yeah, a day. But, but now what it is, like, I'm going to go in details of what I mean, 30 houses per day, because now I'm going specifically into a specific market, right? So before it used to be 150, I used to go pick a block and do the entire block, you know? And every single day, and my conversions were really high, you know? People were getting to know me just because of that aspect. So, I mean, right now on the flyers, you can put whatever. I always tell realtors, don't give information that they already saw in the internet, right? A lot of realtors put, oh, this is the best market ever. It's full market. Like, they get, they get tired because I'm pretty sure we all say the same thing here. But if you say, hey, look, I just sold this property, it's a completely different conversation, right? Because now they're going to ask you how much you sold for, and now they're going to ask you, okay, yeah, can, I, can you give me the same value for my house? 
right? So when I door knock, I don't go, hey, welcome to the best market in the world. Oh, the rates are going to kill you. But everybody's saying the same thing. That's why if you look at my social media, even doesn't matter how high I sold the property. Most of the realtors say, oh, hire the best realtor because I got him 100K over. Come on, it's the market. It's not you. Let's be honest, yeah. right? So if you're saying that on social media, the clients are like, oh, that's another realtor saying he's number one. But that realtor says he's number one too. And that one says he's number one too. And that one got 100. This one got 150. But if I'm talking about something else, they're like, oh, this is the guy that I should go for. And I'm not talking about I got 100K over it. I'm not talking about, hey, look, hire the best realtor to get the job done. I'm not saying that because at the end of the day, the best market, we're all going to make it, right? So in my opinion, whenever you give information to get listings, don't just be the average realtor saying what they already saw on Zillow or an internet, social media, whatever the case may be, you know? So learn about real estate, learn about the house itself, learn how to determine what's the square footage of a place. So if you walk in, I say, oh, you have about 3,000 square feet. They're like, hey, I have 2,800. Now you're accurate when it comes to your numbers, right? So while you're talking about that, they already know you know about actual house, you know, actually real estate, you have a question. Yeah, I mean, I think what I'm hearing from is more of like, you know, to, to be more of the expert, right? Correct. So kind of saying everything that Else yeah, because like, everybody comes with a little booklet. Make, your, make yourself stand out, yeah. right? At a presentation where they're gonna remember you because who knows how many times you're yeah. with. Right. Right. To discuss about the listing. It's always good to bring something just to leave it behind, right? If you want to leave it behind. But if if that's your way to get the listing, you're not gonna get it. Because if you're reading book book back, oh, we're number one real estate company in the world. We had two thousand agents, like they don't care about that, right? Let's be honest. So if you leave that behind, it's gonna help you get the listing. But if you're talking about totally completely different because you're the real estate expert, is what it's going to make you stand out, you know? Yep, you were going to have something. Why do you do a Well, I do because of my niche. My niche is construction, right? Developers and stuff like that. So usually developers in the morning. But I might give you in details. Before, what I used to do, I used to target, if there was a community where there's a lot of retired people, you go in the morning because they all go to the doctor's appointment. They're drinking their coffee in the porch, whatever. So if you come in the morning, it's easy to catch them. If you go to another town like in Maple with Jersey City, where there's a lot of millennials, you should go in the evening because they're coming from work. So, you know, you should start thinking about these little things um, in order to catch more people, you know? So that's why out of 150 door knocks that I used to do, I think my numbers were, I spoke to 40 people and then out of 40 people probably connected with 10. Out of 10, I probably got one listing within 60 days. And then I got all the people that I needed to follow up. At the end of the day, it's all about the follow up. You could talk to 50 people per day. Let's be honest, they're not gonna sell. Open the door, yeah, I wanna sell today. They're not gonna do that, right? So most likely you had to follow up in six months, a whole year, even two years. I got a text message from a guy two days ago that they told me, oh, I'm listing my house in three years. I was like, yo, bro, am I gonna remember? But most likely now I'm gonna remember because he told me and I put in my CRM. And in three years, guess what? Guess what? I'm going to follow up in three years and get the listing. Any questions on this? All right. So I'm going to go based on calling. I'm going to tell you a little bit of my script, how I do it. Literally, I do all of this. This is some systems that you can use. Mojo, Vulcan 7, White Pages, Zillow, Facebook, Red X. Those are call calling uh, services that you can use in order to get listings. So feel free to save it. You got to pay for those. So it's not free. Uh, the only thing free is uh, Zillow. So you could go for sale by owners and you're going to get the first sale by owners number from there, right? Uh, my computer is dying, so. Yeah, I got you. All right, so I'm going to go. This is some ways that I personally get listings for sale by owners, which is pretty common. Uh, every For the most part, like whoever gets listing, they prospect for sale by owners every day. One more time, I like door knocking. Calling, you're probably the 100 realtor calling per day. I personally like to go to the property because most likely you're going to get the listing um if you're calling the for sale by owners so what i used to do before i used to print out the entire list of all the for sale by owners and i'll go house house by house and do it specifically in areas that you're doing um so if you're calling give me a second so um for sale by owners the script that you should use it's not really about you're not gonna sell your house. Cause I hear a lot of realtors saying, hey, you're not gonna sell a house for sale by owner based on the stats. You know, these people, they already got mad. And let's be honest, nowadays, for sale by owners, they are a little bit more smarter than they were used to before. You know, they know how to price properties. Even though we say C, uh, C estimate is not accurate, right now they become a little bit more accurate. So a lot of people, they know how to price properties. So when you, when you go to for sale by owners, 
don't go base it on, hey guys, you know, you're not gonna sell the property. You should hire a professional real estate agent. I go in a different conversation. When you call for sale by owner, what I usually say is, what's the time frame that you're looking to work with a real estate agent? And the reason you ask this question is because if they give you an answer by when they're looking to hire a real estate agent, it's because they're opening at some point working with a real estate agent. So at that point, they're stabbing themselves on the back, right? Because if you ask them, hey, by when are you planning to hire a real estate agent? Two months. Now you already know in two months, they're probably going to interview somebody, right? So now my conversation goes differently. But let me ask you a question. If two months from now pass by, who's the first realtor you're going to have a conversation with? They don't know who they're going to talk to. So now you could just easily say, look, I'm not soliciting you. I just want you to get to know me. So when two months from now pass by, you already have a realtor in mind. But your goal is by the time you go to the appointment, convert them on the spot, right? You're not going to wait two months. That's just a way for you to get into the property. So instead of you calling right away, hey, why are you selling it for a buyer owner? For the most part, realtors sell it for, I mean, owners sell it for a buyer owner because of commission, right? They don't want to pay a commission. So don't say, oh, I have a buyer for your property because by the time you go to the property, you're lying to them. Now they feel offended. I hear some realtors saying, oh, I have a buyer for you. And they come with a little listing presentation to the for sale by owner. And they're like, I thought you had a buyer. Like, why are you soliciting me? So now they get mad, like right away, they're going to kick you out of the house. So that's one way for you to get out. Another way realtors say, hey, look, I'm adding my commission on top of the price. You're lying again. Because now when you go into the, to the property, they were asking 700. Now they're expecting for you to sell the property for 750, but it's worth 600. So now it's like, oh, but you told me you were going to get me on top of what I want. So now that conversation is a little bit more awkward. And just be honest, look, when, what's the time frame that you're looking to work with a real estate agent? So now they're telling you by when they're willing to work with somebody. It could be two weeks from now. So now you, now, you, now you know you have a better chance to get into the property. So now I told them, look, I'm not soliciting you. I'm not going to come with listing presentation, no paperwork. I want to go see the house. Maybe in, by in two weeks from now that you don't have a realtor, I might have a buyer for you. Now it's different than you saying, oh, I have a buyer for you. And now when you get to the property, you're like, hey, look, if in two weeks you haven't sold it, you already got to meet me. You already know who I am. And most likely they're going to call you because they don't want to be interviewing realtors all the time. So that's a script that I use for, for sub owners. And trust me, that conversion is way higher than what I used to have before. Because now they're giving you that, that information, right? Any questions for, for sub owners? And at that point, you don't have objections because you're not asking them about commissions. You're not asking them if they have a family member in the business. It's literally simple. Just them telling you, in two weeks from now, I'm going to hire a realtor. Actually, I do have a question. What about, like, let's say you get someone on the phone and you ask them, like, you know, basically, oh, what would you be looking for? So, so, so would you hire a agent or if they say no, like, what they're willing to give up, like, uh, like, 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 Unfortunately, there's not much, well, there's inventory, but a lot of agents are bringing offers to for sale by owners. So now the for sale by owners are thinking, oh, I could just do this. Realtors are bringing me offers. So if you tell him that, you're pretty much telling them, oh, I could do it for free. Yeah. So now they're going to tell 50 other agents to do the same thing. So now in their mindset is that, you know what? I could sell my property for sale by owner because all these realtors are willing to do this, you know? So I wouldn't, if they say, oh, look, I'm, I'm paying two and a half percent. Oh, a good start. At least you're working with commissions. So when are you looking to hire a real estate agent? So now when they give you that conversation, if they're paying a commission, that's a good start because they already have a commission that they're willing to pay for. So it's good. But you should never say, hey, can I promote it for you? Because now they think their marketing is working and now they're not going to work with a real estate agent. So that's literally so bad. And that's, it's affecting the first sale by owner market because all this for sale by owners oh but i have 20 realtors calling me per day saying that one they have buyers two they could promote the property for me for free and now at that point like what what are you gonna say let's be honest if we were not realtors we'll go for sale by owners right for the most part if we knew how if you knew what we we're doing you know questions nothing good all right expires of course that's the easiest way to get listings um, if you're pretty much, you don't want to go into a whole different market expires, they were already willing to pay your commission. So at that point, you just got to go door knock them and ask them a simple question. What did the other realtor did wrong in order for you not to sell the property? You never say, oh, I'm the best realtor, whatever, whatever. You want to ask them what the other realtor did wrong. So now you could back it up. It's like, oh, he didn't do a staging. Oh, I do staging, right? Oh, he didn't take professional pictures. Oh, I took professional pictures. But if you come in right away, oh, you didn't sell the property because he took horrible pictures or because he didn't know how to price it. 
Now you sound arrogant. Now they're like, oh, another realtor saying the same thing. You want to listen to what went wrong. So you want to ask them that question. What went wrong with the marketing from the other realtor? Whatever they tell you, you back it up and then you do the opposite, you know? All the expires, I used to do this a lot. I don't do it anymore, but I used to get a lot of listings. Go two or three years back. You know, those people, they were willing to sell at some point, but they couldn't sell it. And at that point, you, that realtor already forgot about that client. So you tell, hey, look, I know you guys were looking to sell back in 2019, right? What happened? Not before you could have gotten 500, now you could get 600. So now they might be willing to talk to you, but you got to go back. I used to go when the market crashed, right? So I went years back and they were like, hey, remember when you were trying to sell the property for $250,000 because you were the market crash? Now you could get it for 500,000. And my conversion rates were really high. So you could just go on the MLS, go all the expires, and then just print it out and just go buy it, you know? So all the expires is a good way to get listings as quickly as you can. So any questions on expires? So at that point, you're, whatever the re, they're talking bad about the realtor, you're just going to say the opposite. If they're going to be like, oh, that realtor didn't do open houses. Oh, guess what? I do open houses, <laughs> right? So that's why you never want to go just saying, oh, I'm the best realtor. I'm going to do this right away. Or you couldn't sell the house because the realtor didn't do this. You don't want to be that realtor. You want to listen to them and be like, hey, why, why you couldn't sell the property? And sometimes they're going to tell you, hey, look, the property was overpriced. It was my fault. And now you say, okay, let me educate you and try to help you. What's the actual price? So the problem with realtors, they're so aggressive and they're like, oh, I want to sell your house. We're in the best company. We're in the best market in the world. We do everything. We do that. So now they're listening to that from 50 other realtors. And how is that going to make it different? Right. But if you ask them, what's the issue? They're literally giving you the answer for you to back it up. And it's way easier for you to convert. You know, I don't talk about companies. If I ever go to a listing presentation, I mean, Danny knows here, like we don't, we just talk about ourselves. And how we're gonna do? We just talk about the real estate, about the house itself. We don't talk about companies, professional pictures, videos, because everybody's talking about the same thing. But if you if you listen to them, and it, it's gonna be easier for you to convert that that lead, you know. So pretty much, there's not a specific sample. You just gotta ask what was the issue with the previous realtor, and then with that you're gonna back it up that you do everything completely different. So that way, okay, perfect. You're gonna do it, so I'm gonna hire you. And to be honest, you'll be surprised. It's as simple as that. There's no, at the end of the day, people got to like you too. So you're not, you're not going to come up so, you know, aggressive with them. If they like you, it's going to be way easier uh, uh, to get the listing. Absentee owners, that's one of my favorite ones. Absentee owners is people who have a house, but they live in a different house or they live out of state. I love the out of state absentees. So if you're called calling, conversation is super easy. Hey, you're not managing the properties. What's going on with your tenants? Let me try to help you. Let me try to rent your apartment since you don't know how to manage it. So remember, most of these absentee owners, they're probably investors. So they own like 30 properties, 20 properties, 50 properties. So if you're calling absentee owners every day, you're going to literally bump into somebody who owns 50 houses. And then I don't know what they might tell you. You know what? I'm in Florida. I cannot manage these properties. I want to sell all of them. You know, And my biggest client came from my cold call, which I hated. This year, he gave me 23 houses, one client, right? And he's currently renovating 32 houses. And guess what? I'm going to be the realtor. And that's guaranteed. I literally go every week. He calls me. Hey, go check this out. Let me know what's the price. I got it through absentee owner, call calling. It's funny. That guy used to, he used to have his own license and he used to sell his properties. I call calling on Clifton. He was living in Upper Side of River. And then he was like, no, I saw everything by myself. I was able to convert him. And now he gives me all his properties. Yes. Uh, Mojo. You, you got to pay extra extra money. Remind. Uh, remind too. Remind too. Yeah. 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 To pull everything. I mean, but here's the thing. You want to be by that time, because here's the thing. It's free, but you got to die one by one, right? Yeah, that's not so yeah. honestly, if you're gonna invest in your business, you should spend money on it. Because by the time you're calling one by one, I already met the owner and you don't even know, right? <laughs> so pay $150 a month, go to Mojo, and then you're gonna literally export everything from it, and then you're gonna dial every single absentee owner, you know, and you're gonna meet people out of state. And honestly, the conversation is so easy. 
Because you don't want to ask them, well, are you willing to sell your properties? Hey, look, I know you live out of state, you live in Texas, you own this property in Clifton, how's that going? Are the tenants paying? Easy conversation. Now, now they're going to be, oh, this guy cares about me. And they're going to be like, you know what? They're not paying me. Now you're trying to help them out. And they'll be like, yo, I have another property in Patterson. They're like, I have an issue with my tenant. Oh, I have another property here. I have a vacant unit. Can you rent it out for me? So now that conversation is very easy. And it's one client giving you a bunch of properties. I'm telling you that my biggest client year to date is that guy. You know, And that guy already put me on with 10 other developers. And this guy, honestly, I had the best meeting at the world literally this morning because of this guy. And as I, I call, call this guy literally last year, you know? So absentee owners is a good way for you to get listings. You could, you could get it through Mojo. If you want to be a little bit more affecting and practical, you know, you use the dialer, you call every day, and then you put it one specific city. So you put absentee owners in Clifton. So he's going to call people who own properties in Clifton, but they live in a different state or a different town or whatever the case might be, you know? Well, we're gonna go. So I, I'm gonna go. I think that's the fifth one: foreclosures and foreclosures. You mean like the bank owns the property? Yeah, and then the tenants they pay and get a, a third party, but they don't pay it directly to the bank. They pay it. So like a short sale, you mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's REOs. Yeah, we're going to go into that. Uh, that's one way of prospecting, too, but I'll show you in a few. Um, we, any questions on absentee owners? Nothing, right? For rent by owners, my biggest sell year to date came from a friend by owner, right? Guess what? If you see a friend by owner, most likely they don't have a realtor. Because, you know, if they had a realtor, they would have given that rental to a realtor. The problem is, like, do you think I like re rentals? I don't like it. It's what? How much are you going to make? $800, $1,000 the most? But... My biggest for rent by owner was a little an elder lady putting a for rent by owner in a building. And I thought it was just a condo. And I was like, no, I own the building. And I was like, okay, I rented out her unit on the first floor, third floor, fourth floor. Because of that for rent by owner in less than six months, I sold $3.2 million in total just because of that lady, right? In six months. A lot of people drive by for rent by owners and they just look at it and move on, right? For rent by owners, literally there's a lot of money in there. Because these people, if they had a realtor, they would have gave that rental to their realtor. And if you rented out that unit for them, perfect. Just keep it as part of your CRM. And then in the future, they're going to sell. If you help them out on a rental, eventually they're going to call you to sell the property. So for rent by owner is literally one of the easiest way to get a free lead. Because at that point, they're not paying your commission. So they're not going to say no. Hey, look, I'm a real estate agent. I just want to rent out your property. You don't have to pay for nothing. We'll run the credit for the tenant. We do this, we do that, whatever. They're going to give you the rental lead right away. You might not make money, crazy money, but eventually, hey, look, remember you helped me out rent my apartment? Yeah, I want to sell my house now. So that's what happened in this building in Western Year. I sold it for 1.8, and then she gave me another building for like 900000 So, And then she gave me a lot of properties in Florida that I'm referring out. So that was just through the foreign by owner. And every single time I see a foreign by owner, I'm calling. And those are in my CRM. No, this guy, they were looking to rent this property. And eventually they become a listing, you know. But at the end of the day, you gotta follow up with these people. If they did, if you call them like, no, we don't want a realtor, I'll call them in a year from now. Hey, look, remember back in November you were looking to rent your apartment? Is the tenant paying now? And uh, eventually they, oh, oh yeah, I remember you called me, you were trying to help me out. Now you might get the listing in the future, you know. So for rent by owners is an easy and a, a free way to get a listing. Like I told you, my biggest sell came from that. So any questions on for rent by owners? I would say, uh, <clears throat> kind of in general. So, like, what what I've seen, what I've seen from you is, you would do a ton, right? So your your days are are, are packed, right? Yeah. And I kind of find the the same thing for myself. And, and you know, you keep referring to like your brand and follow up. Yeah. So, what do you have like in place to make sure that like when you're running all day, that mm -hmm. when you get back here. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not like forgetting about, okay, I talked to this person, I, I talked to this person, like, who do I need to follow up with? Like, do you attribute it to like really working hard through like your CRM and staying disciplined to that? Or? So CRMs are the key of out of all of this. I could keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, but if you don't follow up on your CRM, you're not going to get nothing because for the most part, the client is going to forget about you. You could have been the best realtor right now, but they're going to forget about you tomorrow. They lost your business card. They lost your name, your phone number. 
they lost everything about you. So if you're not calling every single day, if you're not following up with these people every single day, they're going to forget about you. So if I'm door knocking every day, I'm writing my notes. Oh, I spoke with this person. I have an app where literally if I'm door knocking that person, I put the address, what conversation went down, I just write it down. By the time I get to the office, every single day, I'm importing minimum 15 new contacts per day, minimum. Right now, we're trying to do 33 contacts per day as door knocking, right? How, how many people you talk per day? So every single day, you should be adding people in your CRM. Every single day. Follow up bus. Yeah. Follow up bus. Bus. Yeah. So just by the name, you already know you're a bus following up. And, you know, so it should be like that, to be honest. Otherwise, you're not going to get listings. Yeah. Just curious, how many contacts do you have in your house? 3,450. And then out of 3,450, a good percentage is something's going to come out of there. Because the people that I follow up, I make sure there's somebody that I'm going to sell them something in a few. So, but, and I have, for the most part, door knocking is pretty much everything. I have like 2,000, right? So that one, that's when it comes to door knocking. Questions on foreign buy owners? That's the easiest and free way to get listing. Just saying, right? Foreclosures, which you asked me, it's pretty much the same thing. So now you call them up, just they don't go into foreclosure process. You tell them that they could go into short sale, whatever the case may be. That's a specific market. If you want to get into that market, it's one way for you to get listings. But in my opinion, it's too much work. And I mean, if you want to become an expert in that, it's up to you, right? But I don't short sales. I, we have deals together personally with Danny. We hire a short sale negotiator. And she does everything for us. We pay them 2%, 3%, we don't care, but we get the listing on the back end for the flip, whatever the case may be. So if you want to get into the market, there's a lot of money to be made, but it's too much work. Like you should, you should just become an expert in that specific bracket of cold calling or door knocking. So it's not my forte, but there's a lot of people that I know they're making a lot of money to foreclosures and they make a lot of short sales, but it's a long-term money. And because... If you put a short sale, there's short sales that I have for a year and a half ago and they haven't closed, you know? So in my opinion, it's whatever. Question of foreclosures, nothing. I didn't give much details, but. When you have a cold call, uh, what is the procedure we need to do? What is the follow-up? Let's say uh, we have a person, a prospect is gonna be on foreclosure. What do we yeah. have to wait until they the yeah. what is, what is so that's what I'm saying. It gets a little bit more complex because because at that point you're kind of like telling them what's the process not to go into foreclosure. So now you're gonna tell them, oh, you gotta go short sale, you gotta get a hardship letter, you gotta because it's too much work. That to be honest, like the package for do go uh do short sales are like this big, and to be honest, to make what like ten thousand dollars that is gonna take forever. It that is doesn't make sense. Yeah, so that main question, yeah. Property, you could sell it. Now, you could sell it, yeah. and, and then you need to know what the bank, what they yeah. pay. Yeah. The total payoff of the bank. That's, that's key. So if they have enough equity to sell it, they could sell it, right? Otherwise, you got to go into short sale okay. process. Yeah, because if they're impossible, uh, they can save the house before yeah. they can go to the cold For the most part, like, they have little equity, but they could still sell it and just make a couple of bucks out of it just to get out of that foreclosure stage, but... If they go into short, so it's a little bit more complex. There's a little bit, there's a lot of documents to be asked for, you know. And at that point, in my opinion, I'm not gonna do that. So I just call a short sale negotiator. She's gonna ask me two percent or three percent of my commission. I like, go for it. I don't care. Like, like she would do everything, you know, all the paperwork and stuff like that. So. Just to, to your point, you're saying, look, I have seven other percentage points. Yeah, correct. For me, it's like just for me, it's like I have short sales. I have 14 short sales from a year and a half. That one day is gonna close. And one day my bank account is good. I, that check is going to come into my bank account, but I didn't do nothing. You know, like at that point, my shirts and negotiator is going to do that. So it's that specific market. If you want to get into that market, you know, bonus with equity. Um, that's one way of calling people too. So you could go to Rima, you could go to Mojo. If you see people that they, they all, I mean, that they don't own too much money in their property, you could prospect them and be like, Hey, look, I see that you own like you have $700,000 of equity in your property. And I was just curious if you're willing to sell your property because, you know, they probably own it free and clear. So that's just one way to get uh, listings, you know. But you're pulling data, data you can pull. Yeah, Remind gives you the option that tells you 
um, if the owner has more than five hundred thousand dollars equity. And you're only the one by my county. Yeah, by by area specific. So my mentality is for every listing that I get, I need to get three more in the same time. Mm -hmm. That's my my mentality. For every single listing that I get, I need to get another three listings from that listing in the same time. So I'm I'm gonna find any way out of this to get another listing, you know. And that's how you start dominating properties. I mean areas. That's how you start getting more listings. So for every listing that I get, for the most part, I get two more listings all the time. You know, so that should be your mentality. If you get a listing in Union County, I mean, Union specifically, you should door knock every single day, call every day, use that listing as leverage to get another listing, you know? You, you had a question? Okay. So, all the information is from Mojo or Rima. Yes. Yeah. No, I try to get something in that area specifically, you know, because you could use that as leverage and you get two more listings, three more listings, not all your for sale signs. My biggest accomplishment one time was 14 for sale signs in the same block, right? Yeah, yeah. Sanford. We sold the house, 854. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got a listing through Doranag. Then I got another one to Doranag. Then I got another one call calling and I just kept going. 14 for sale signs literally in the same block. If you drove through Sanford, all my for sale signs were on the same block. <laughs> right so and that's the mentality that you should have for every listing that you have you know because you know you gotta use that as leverage if you don't get enough listings you should take advantage of that one listing you know because at the end of the day that's that's only that data that you can actually pull on your behalf in order to get a listing you know so that's my mentality for every listing that you should have you should get three more um rentals mls another way realtors don't follow up whenever they rent an apartment for the most part so this is an easy way. I just find out about this one and I actually got like two listings out of it. Um, somebody said in another event that you go on the MLS and see whatever you just rented it out a year ago in a specific area and just go all those owners. Right. I'd be like, hey, look, 10 months ago, you rented out this property. And I was just curious to know if your tenants are paying or if they're gonna renew the, the, the listing. And then, I mean, the lease. And otherwise, if they're not, you get the rental listing afterwards, you know? So pretty much what I said on the foreign by owner, but now in rentals MLS, it's another free way to do it. So just go in the MLS, go for whatever rented out a year ago, and then just call call them just to see if the tenants are paying on time or whatever the case may be, you know. Questions on that? That's great. Honestly, I did that and I was like, yeah. I was doing the same thing from foreign by owners and it was working like crazy, but that's like, that's another level of like, and if, remember, at the end of the day, I could keep talking for three hours a year. But if you guys don't do it, you guys don't follow up. It doesn't make sense what I say, right? Sure. And at the end of the day, it's not even when you do it. Key of this is follow up. I keep insisting. This is like what people don't get. You could have 50 leads per day, but if you don't follow up on those leads, you're never going to get the listing again. Sure. Because there's going to be a savage like me or the dance group that we're going to go out over like your listings in two seconds, you know? Like, by the time you're trying to follow up, we already listed it. And then when you call them, they're like, yo, I just sold it already, you know? <laughs> so you should be able to follow up every single day. That I follow up on all my clients, well, the clients are quicker to follow up every single day. Prospect in the morning, and during the evening, I'm already following up in literally all my, all my potential lists and stuff like that. Some of them get annoyed, but I don't care. Like, eventually they're gonna give it to me. Another question. There's yeah, there's a saying, right? Listings are the name of the game, something like that, right? But let's be honest, you might be a better buyer's agent than a listing agent. So the raw mentality that realtors come into this mindset, F buyers, let me go to listings, right? And they try two years to get, try to get a listing, they only get one. So you should do both at the same time when you're brand new and track your numbers. That's the most important thing. Track your number. Okay, I saw 20 houses on the buyer side, two on the listing side. Let's be honest, you might suck on the listing side and you might be good on the buyer side. Or it could be the opposite, right? So you just track your numbers. Look what you're good at. I'm not saying that you might be bad in listings, but you should go where you're good at and eventually you're going to get the listings. At the end of the day, for the most part, if you're doing buyers, eventually you're going to start getting listings. But when you're brand new, you should do everything because you don't know what you're good at. You know, so do both. Do open houses every weekend, showings, door knock every day, call call every day. 
track all your numbers. Okay, my leads are coming from this source. I'm converting more this, I'm making more this. And if you're getting 20 listings out of door knocking and two out of call calling, you already know what you're good at. So now you use that and then you just do it every day. You know? I would say, would you would you agree with the fact that like to me when you look at when you look like look at top like top agents or ones that are like performing like like dynamically? Yeah. Like, you know, outside of the box, you look at something like, I don't know how they get that many units. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's, it's because they have a good mix of both sides. Do you agree with that? Like what's your what's your like sales of my mix? Look, there's one guy that I look up to and I always mention his name. His name is John Cipion from Lighthouse. Their team is like another level of like prospecting this people this guy you walk into his office literally all the agents are like in a specific booth we know where to see there's no chance to sit down because his mentality if you're call calling you're more dynamic if you're standing out so all the realtors are standing up for hours they have like personal uh head headsets every single morning all the agents they need to be at the office and he puts it on his Instagram or whatever like, they need to be at his office the latest by seven otherwise you're not going to make the cut at the team Right. And this guy, when I, I go to his office because he tried to recruit me a couple of times. And when I go to his office, it's like all the agents are like, nobody talks to them. Everybody has head headphones and call calling every single day. They have like an hour break to just literally they have like a pool game to play for an hour. They go back into call calling. Right. So that's like savage. And they, I believe they close $150 million in six months this year. Right. And they only seven people in the team. <laughs> Imagine. But they all manage every list, every single listing appointment that I go, his information is there. Like legit, every single listing appointment that I go, his information is in there. So he's calling every day, he's following up every day. So, you know, there's something good that he's doing, right? I personally, like I said more time, myself, I love door knocking. I have a different mindset. I want to work with builders when one builder is going to give me 50 houses, right? All the people, they just go on the retail aspect of it. So you could do that every day, like he does. He calls everybody. And then eventually he just lists all these houses. So there's no right or wrong at the end of the day, you know. But you should go for whatever whatever you got. I call every day, but I hate it, right? I just do it because I just want my name to be there when I call somebody, hey, Oscar, whatever the case may be. But I personally hate it. When I tell you, hate it, hate it. But call calling, call me every day. I'm door knocking every day. I do it Saturdays, Sundays, at night, you know. Sometimes if I'm bored, like I go out like at midnight. And I'm just like putting door hangers and just walking, just just because, all right? Yeah, yeah sometimes if I'm bored. No, no but it's <laughs> it's just one way for me to tell you that I'm addicted to that, right? When I started, it's because remember, I'm young. So a lot of times in my mentality, if I'm door knocking, I have 60 seconds to impress this person. When I used to call call people, I'll make the appointments, and as soon as I walked in. They would look at me up and I was like, wait, you're the realtor? I was like, yes. Like, I was like, yeah, bro, how many years have you been in the business? You look like 12 years old, right? <laughs> so right off the bat, they would turn me down. I'll be speaking with confidence, but at that point, they're like just thinking, bro, how old are you? Like, I have people that had listening presentation, like every 10 minutes will be like, how old are you? Like, I was like, bro, well, let's talk about the house, right? <laughs> but if I'm door knocking and I impress them right away, you think they're going to keep asking me how old I am? They're not going to ask me. So if I'm door knocking, my mentality has 60 seconds to convert this person. As soon as they listen to you, they'll be like, that's it. I already know I converted that person. Like if they're listening to me and they're asking questions and they're not asking me about me, I know I'm going to convert it. So that's what, that was the reason I started doing door knocking because every time I went to an appointment, they're like, who is this little kid, right? But if I'm door knocking, they're not, they're not going to question me. So that's, that was my approach. When yeah. did you figure out that venturing forward by developers when one client gave me nine houses in one week. <laughs> so that's when I when I realized that that's where I want to be. And I enjoy more of that. I enjoy real estate. I like seeing foundations, where the building's coming, at what stage are they in. So I don't, no offense, I hate going over and somebody talking about, oh, I've been here for 30 years. This is emotional for me. I'm just like, <laughs> okay you know like i don't want to sound offensive but that's me like i like to talk straight up to the business like okay lumber price is this much you probably spend this much money in square feet and that's like going crazy right but if somebody tells me oh look my daughter what's it called yeah so, uh, okay whatever but that's my I, I i don't enjoy it as much right like my, my thing is like i gotta in my listing appointments i don't want to be longer than an hour 
30 minutes is for me my thing but if i'm there two hours talking about her daughter went to college <laughs> like, <laughs> right so it's, that's my my opinion right so that's when i went to developers and everything yeah and at the end of the day if you're working with builders one client is going to give you x amount of properties on a retail you just got to keep following up all the time. You know? because, because to your point, the, the builder is really about like your expertise and the numbers. The yeah. numbers work. You just talk numbers. Every developer has yeah. tons of properties. Right. And if you do one good job, they're going to give you everything. You know, I'm telling you, this guy, I just made him give me 24 houses in six months. Less. Yeah, I'm on there. And he's building 36. And right now, he just made an introduction with another guy. He's doing 53 properties. And, you know, guess what? I'm going to be the guy for the 53 properties. So that's my my thing. Do you work with these developers? What do you think that this value offers to the business with these? No, about construction. Don't come in as like marketing consultant. I'm going to take professional pages. Same thing that everybody does say. When I come in, it's, I sound like a psycho. I go to Home Depot almost every day just to learn what are the prices of lumber, pipe, like pipes, copper, like whatever, everything. So when I come in, I already know how to analyze a deal. When you come in, just come in as you know what they're going on. I was like, okay, you bought it for this. I, I sometimes I'd be like, look, I can sell it for 1 million times 70% minus how much money you spend. You probably bought it for 400, right? They're like, yeah, I just bought it for 380. So if you're talking about numbers with them or construction, they're going to give you the list because you're talking their language. They don't care about the marketing. Eventually, they're going to care about that when they finish the product. But if you're talking to them what they're good at, you're going to get the listing. So just be, make sure you're knowledgeable about investments, you know? The return on investment, and that you want to change, um, cap rates, you know, how much money they spend, price per square footage, all this information, you're talking their language. So you're going to get the listing for the most part. You know, yeah. How? Yeah. I, I literally switched it to, I was like, are you going to sell yours or no? But <laughs> not, not like that, right? But, <laughs> but I was like, so, I mean, I kind of talk about it as like, hey, look, I I'm glad to hear that. You know, I'm glad that she's going into college, whatever the case may be. But, but let's talk about what we're going to do here. And small transition. Like, you know, you don't want to sound like an asshole, but, you know. But at the end of the day, remember, you're, you're there for the business. So you want to listen to your clients, right? I, I Look, I don't want to sound bad. Like, I care about my clients, right? But my point is that we're talking about how to get business and how do you should handle your business, you know? And if you take control of the conversation, they know you're you're about it, you know. So, uh, open house invites, like I said before, I I don't do as many open houses anymore, but I used to. Uh, well, we're talking about calling. So you call the people to invite invite them to the open house, right? You call the neighborhood and you tell them to go over the open house. Just it's simple conversation. Hey, look, my name is Oscar Nunes. I'm hosting an open house at One Two Three Main Street. I was just curious to know if you'd be interested. If you happen to know anybody who might be interested in moving into the neighborhood, I'm buying this property. So the purpose with this is for them to go into the open house and they get to meet you. And eventually, if they went to the open house, it's because they're curious to know about the property. They might be interested in selling or whatever the case may be. So calling for the open house invite is super easy to do. So just pretty much invite them to the open house. And once they're there, you tell them that if they're interested in selling. Circle prospect is whatever, just go house by house. And as I said one more time, don't talk about the market too much because they already know this. And every single realtor, they just say, hey, look, best market ever. I could sell this house for you, whatever. So just go with something that's sold in the area. Hey, look, one, two, three, main street just sold for $500,000. Do you know anybody else? Oh, that's one good way to get listings. Don't ever ask them if they want to sell. Ask them if they happen to know anybody who want to sell. There's two reasons behind this. One, people like to talk a lot, right? People are like, oh, my neighbor wants to sell, right? So now you got a lead for free, right? So at that point, you're like, okay, what's your name? Okay, Maria. Now when you go to the neighbor, hey, how are you? I know your neighbor, Maria. You just met Maria, right? I know your neighbor, Maria, like, and she's a great neighbor, right? Yeah. Have you ever thought about selling? <laughs> so now it's like, you already know they're looking to sell. And if you, if you tell them you know the neighbor, they, are, they feel a little bit more comfortable in talking to you because they think you know Maria. Right. So that's one way to circle prospect. Don't ever ask them if they want to sell. Because for the most part, they're like, they're going to close the door on you and they're going to be like, look, I don't want to sell. But you touch their ego if you ask them who else wants to sell. So now we're like, yeah, they want to sell. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Just an example, right? I'll be like, yeah, but you never asked me if I want to sell. How much do you think I could get for my house? Oh, so you want to sell. 
so now it's like easier for you to convert, you know? Yeah, right there. And people like to talk. There's people tell you, hey, look, my neighbor was thinking about selling. I right, perfect. So they already give you the free leads without you asking, you know? So that's one way of circle prospecting. Good? No questions? All right, I'm gonna go to my, what I love, right? So pretty much it is literally everything that we spoke about, right? But door knocking. My fortes are the ones on the bottom, you know, visit planning boards, like go to every single like zoning board, planning boards in every town just to meet the developers, just to know what's going on in the town. They usually do it once per month, one time a month. And they just go over there and you're gonna see what they're talking about. They're gonna be like, hey, look, I'm looking to build a three family. They get approved, just wait until they get out of the, to the room and you follow them. But like, hey, look, I, I saw you got approved for a three family. You have a realtor for it and you get the listing, right? Um, builders, that's my, my niche, right? Every time I see any construction, I'm getting down. I don't care if it's 200 units, 500 units, a million units or one single rental, I'm getting down. I'm, I literally think I'm good at talking to developers. And I just talk about numbers. As I say one more time, key about this, don't go and thinking about marketing, talk about numbers when it comes to builders, get to know what's actually going on. Prosperous square footage, Return on investments, 1031 exchange, opportunity zones, all this information that's actually valuable for them. So door knocking is literally everything that I just spoke about, but this is you're talking to this person, to these people in, in person. So now you don't have to follow up with them just to see when you're gonna call them again. With these people, you're already at the listing. My mentality is if I'm door knocking, I'm already at the listing presentation. That's my that's my mentality, right? So I don't have to call them, make an appointment. By the time they confirm, they might cancel on you, or they might do all of this. If I'm door knocking, that's my listing presentation, that is specific moment, you know? So you cut everything. By the time you're calling, guess what? I'm already talking to your client. That's my client, you know? Yeah. I personally don't, but if you don't have enough, uh, something to back up your business, you should, right? Because myself, I could just say, look, I just saw this, I just saw that, I just saw this, I listed this, I listed that. And my thing, I, I use my social media. I follow every single client that I have on social media. I don't give them business cards. Like literally, I don't even know when was the last time I even give a business card. Be like, okay, you want to talk to me? Follow me on Instagram. So now you don't got to follow up. Now they're literally looking at your stuff without you following up. You know, I have so many clients that I don't even know they follow me. And sometimes like, I was like, oh, I went to this listing appointment. I put the house. And then by the time I meet there, you posted my house. I didn't even give you a listing yet. I was like, oh, shit. Right? Because they follow me on Instagram. But for the most part, they're going to give me the listing. So my, I always, I never come with something. I show them my social media. Hey, look, I just listed this house. I just did this marketing. I just did this video, whatever. Oh, follow me on Instagram. So now they follow me. I'm using Instagram because that's what I like. But you can use Facebook, whatever the case may be. And then now at that point, you don't got to follow with those, with those people. You know, at that point, they're looking at your stuff. And now they're like, oh, man, I just saw you sold this house. And then they're just going to give you the listing because they saw they sold something around the area. Can you give me an example of what, um, I guess, your pitch would be or the process of Door Which one you want me to do? Door knocking. Just, the, no. just like, yeah. when you knock on the door, like, the just give me Look, I only do, the truth is, all of these I used to do before, but I pretty much do this ones, this ones, and this one, like, every single day. But that's what I'm saying. Before I used to do 150, now I only do 30. So I do 10. Just an example. Yes. What time do you start? Nine. Nine. So, so not getting less you're, you're, you're targeted. You're targeted. now it's targeted. I already know a builder is going to sell. So I don't have to ask them that question if they're going to sell, right? So at that point, I'm not telling them, hey, you want to sell? Right. It's more like you come with the knowledge, right? Or construction. Uh, for run by absentee owners, yeah, that's a little different, right? You go to, to the, it's pretty much the same script of calling. Hey, look, how are you? My name is Oscar. I, I know you own a property in Clifton. How are the tenants doing over there? Simple question. I was like, wait, who are you? Oh, look, I'm a real estate agent. I was just curious to know if I could help you rent the apartments. Don't go for, the problem is like, can I sell your house? Right, people are going to be like, get out of here, right? But if you ask me, can I help you rent the apartment start smaller? They're like, no, I don't want to rent it out, but I'm thinking about selling. All right, perfect. Easy conversation, right? So if I go to builders, I mean, that's my forte. So I'm just going to come in, literally start looking at the entire construction, 
And I'm already thinking about how much potentially he bought it for. And I just come here and I saw that you probably uh, built this property with about $350,000, right? Like, yeah, that's how much I spent. Perfect. So that means as I make it the number, it's 1 million times 70%. That's a calculation just so, just so you know how much they potentially bought it for. But like, so one mil this house is probably worth a million times 70% minus 250,000. Oh, you probably bought it for like 300, right? Yeah, about the same. So now if you're talking that conversation, they're like, oh, damn, this guy knows. Be like, when was the last time you, uh, how much you bought the lumber for? Oh, $3 a square feet, the two by twos or whatever the case may be. If you're talking about this conversation with the builders, they're going to give you the listing, you know? I have a question with the builders, right? You go to the houses that are like coming up, right? Yeah. Usually, you just knock during the day yeah. when they're doing construction. The problem with builders, remember, they have different projects. So I go in the morning because they're usually dropping off the workers. So I try to catch them. Man. Like, that's by the time everybody's at the gym and working out, I'm at 6 30, 7 because that's when they drop the workers. <laughs> right. So I just come in, hey, man, I know they're dropping the workers at, but I, I talk to the developer or the builder or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that kind of was my question, too. So, like, you go to the job site and they're not there, you just try to get the uh, I try, I, I try to like, try to finesse it with the, with the, with the high contractors. Be like, hey, look, do you know if the developer buys more properties? And they're gonna be like, yes. Look, I have another house. I don't have, I have a vacant lot. You think he might be interested in him buying that? You guys do the construction, so they get excited because they're gonna, gonna get another job. So like, oh, we're gonna get another job. Yeah, look, here's the number. <laughs> here's the number, and they just give it to you. Simple conversation. You gotta play with your mind. Number. What would you say to that person when you, when you reach out to them? Because how the worker gave you the number. Yes. How is that, how, how is that Simple conversation. Hey, look, my name is Oscar Nunes. I, I pretty much specialize in working with investors and developers right now. My This is my pitch because I have the things, right? So I'll be like, I'm currently, because I have about 43 flips going on as we speak, right? So I'll be like, look, I have 43 flips going on. I was just curious to know if you guys are interested in buying more properties. Don't go for the listing. My key with this, don't go for the listing right away because they get turned down. Right. So like, oh, do you have more properties? Yeah. At this point, I do have properties to offer. I was like, look, I have a vacant lot here. I have a flip. But look, I don't like talking on the phone. Can I meet you at the property that you're currently building? So now you meet them at that property where you don't know. So now you talk about potentially getting them a deal. And now you talk, oh, talk to me about the, uh, this property. Like, what are you going to do about it? Like, oh, I don't know. I should do this. And that's when you start pitching. Hey, look, I could help you out and do this and do that, whatever the case may be. You know? So it's. Don't, don't get like afraid developers is a different conversation for sure it's not a regular retailer whatever you gotta know the numbers you gotta know construction you gotta do every single thing when it comes to investment don't be wasting leads you know what i used to do before if you guys want to practice i used to call call on door knock two hours away from here because i didn't care if i got the listing or i didn't get the listing so i was not burning my leads right so if you're door knocking right now somebody that you're afraid of like and that person be like get out of here now you burn that lead because maybe you didn't know how to approach it so what I used to do is like door knock two hours away in areas that I didn't care about, right? So I was practicing over there, you know? So if you guys want to practice, go in areas that you know you're not going to get listings. And even if you get it, whatever, you get it. I got listings in Vineland. So at some point, I was like three hours away, right? But I was just doing it to practice. So you guys should be doing that in order to get your skills up and everything. So, so you yeah. But remember, if you're door knocking, you're pretty much gonna bump into dry uh, sites all the time. I mean, uh, uh, construction sites, yeah. So pretty much if you're door knocking every day, you're gonna literally, every time I'm driving, I get to see 10 or 20. So I'm driving, every time I go home, I drive a different street just to find something. So now you think, I've seen you doing big projects now, like one of the bottom, yeah. Right? And you told me, yo, you got a buyer. I said, hell no, man. <laughs> so, but, um, like what you think, like Bergen County, more up in some of the yeah. areas like that? Here's the thing. I used to be afraid to go for those people, right. right? But now I realize that it's the same conversation. With these people, you're not talking about marketing. You're talking about construction site. You're talking about, you know, you put what kind of foundation you put, what how much you spend on the property, what's the price of lumber going for. Like all this conversation is completely different than the actual listing. So, yeah. so I just thought I'd like to go to and uh, testify to going off because I wouldn't even know what to say. So what would be, because like, I just always think what can I add value when I knock on somebody's door? Like, what do you think I should say? Here's the thing about, and, and I keep, in, I've been saying this is the beginning, right? And I know it sounds like 
It might not be the truth. Door knocking, it's I don't even call calling. It's for the follow up. It's not for the current moment. You're, you're not going to, for the most part, you're not going to get people saying, yeah, I want to start right now. Right. So whatever conversation you're doing, just to build a report. And then eventually, you know, you're going to get the listing. If you want to get listings right away, you just go for sub owners, builders, and expires. Those are the people pretty much telling you, okay, I want to sell right now, right? The rest of them, if you circle prospect every day, because a lot of people ask me, it's impossible you get listings like that because I've been door knocking every single day. I don't get it. But remember, I'm targeting specific people that I know they're going to sell eventually, you know? So, and you should do everything. Don't go based on what I do because I don't want to, I don't want to sound like that, but you might suck at this, but you might be good at this. You know, you might, whatever the case may be. So there's no perfect secret. Just do everything and just find what you better. Got a question. Yeah. So, I mean, it all, it all goes based on and everything. Everything is different conversation, right? So I'm going to go quickly one by one. For sale buyer, hey, look, my name is Oscar Dennis. I, I'm a real estate agent. Say you're a real estate agent right away, right? Because otherwise they get mad. That, okay, you just wasted two minutes of my time just to tell me you're a real estate agent, right? <laughs> so simple conversation. I like, hey, look, I see that you guys are selling the property for sale buyer. I was just curious, you know, what's the time frame that you're looking to work with a real estate agent? Same script. Like this doesn't change. And this is what has worked out for me. One more time. Everything I'm telling you works for me, right? You, you might find your own way to do it. They're like, look, I'm not interested right now, but look, matter of fact, I'm interested in, in about two months. Come back to two months from now. Perfect. Look, I, I completely understand two months from now, you're looking to work with a real estate agent. In that, in that time frame, I might be able to bring you somebody or you might be able to meet me and try to see if in two months from now, we can work together. Can I check the property out? 90% of the time, they're going to let you in because they're looking to sell their house. So now you're building the report and you're already inside the house. And at that point, it's like, how are you going to stand out and getting along with them? That's for first of all, you already got in. And at the end of the day, you're not going to get, you're probably going to get the listing sometimes at the same day, but otherwise you got to follow up with these people. That's the key. Now that's when you, hey, look, you need a 218 BC. <laughs> literally everything is literally like, it's a system, right? And this is what I do all the time. You want, hey, you need a 218 BC. What is that? And I tell you, look, you need a fire extinguisher for the CEO or whatever, whatever. Look, the, the railings on the front, they're loose. You're not going to pass FHA. I don't know if you knew, if you knew that. No, I didn't know. Now you go to a downstairs to the basement. That's where like most of the knowledge comes in. Or you have a, you know, Federal Pacific. A lot of people didn't even know what Federal Pacific is. That's just a panel that most of the companies, they're not going to insure anymore, right? So if you're talking about this, you know, everybody's going to give you the listing because now you're pretty much guiding them before they sell the house. Yeah. yeah. But if you're coming, hey, look, I'm going to take professional pictures here. Okay, that realtor said the same thing. Oh, I'm going to do open houses. But that realtor said the same thing, right? So there's no value that you're giving at that point. So I pretty much just go to pretty much learn real estate. This is what I tell people. Learn real estate and real estate is the property, right? Learn about that. Learn about mortgages. Learn about every time you have a deal going on, go to all the inspection reports. Uh, every time you have an inspection, I don't go anymore. But before I used to be listening to every. I sounded like the new kid. I was like next to the inspector. I was like, yo, what is that? Right. So he would tell me, no, yo, this is bad because of that. All right, perfect. So I try to memorize everything. So now when I go to a listing appointment, hey man, you need a G GFI, whatever the case may be, like little things like that, that they don't know about. So if you're giving all that information, they're like, yo, this is the guy that's going to help me before you even sell my house to actually do something. Sometimes I tell them, look, you should do this before you sell your house because otherwise you're not going to pass FHA. And 90% of the people in this area, they're FHA buyers and whatever the case may be. So you start saying all this conversation, they're like, you know, this guy's going to help me go through that transaction. So you should be able to talk about when it comes to questions. Yeah, so, so pretty much I do it strategically, right? So I'll be like, look, I don't have a business card because, you know, nowadays it's completely different. But let me ask you, what's your number? So now you push them against the wall right away. Oh, can I get your number? It's different, right? So as I'm talking to them, I'm grabbing my phone. I already have the dog. Okay, what's your number? <laughs> right. So now it's like, they're not going to say no right away. So it's like, oh, 201, but don't be calling me now. I won't be calling you that often. Don't worry. So, but, yeah, but literally it's easy. I don't have business cards nowadays. It's easier. Or you, you even have linked the new card so that if you tap it, it goes into your card too, whatever. It is. What's your follow -up? I have A, B, and C categories. 
right? So if I know they're gonna sell in 30 days, it's my A people, right? So I follow up with them every two days. If they, happen? There's different ways to follow up. Text messages, calling, social media, or um, mailing, whatever the case may be. So it all depends on the client, right? But I have eight categories. I have the B categories, that is three to six months. I have the C categories between six months and a year, right? And then even if they want to sign three years from now, I'm still going to put them on the C category. Not, don't put it on the Z category, right? Because those people, they might say three years, but something might come up and they might sign a year, right? So just put every bracket, pull all the most important people in order, you know? Let's say they say six months. How often do you follow up with them? Before they Twice a month, every two weeks. Every two months follow up. Yeah, every two weeks. Every two weeks. Yeah. So A category, I follow up every two days. B category is every two weeks. And then C category is once a month. No, just like it could it could be anything. It could be like, look, I just I'm hosting an open house. I just want to invite you if you want to come over. Right. That's that's a follow-up, right? And that's it. And then later on, you send him a text, man. Hey, look, I just sold this property. You know, and if you want to use this as your comps, whatever the case may be. So you just keep following up. You know, don't pressure people to sell because then they're gonna get offended. Another thing you guys can do too is to follow up so it doesn't get spilled. Like you said, follow up spilled. Yeah. Please don't use spills, remember. Yeah. So if you get to know the birthdays, you have kids, you know, the dog, you gotta get to know them. So our CRM that we use Liberty, it automatically also you too. Like remind the birthdays, the anniversary, whatever it is. And sometimes just that little touch. Happy birthday, happy birthday, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is. And they appreciate that. Yeah, they appreciate that. If you follow up on their birthday, you know, oh, this guy reminds me of my birthday. You know, you know what I think that I do on Instagram? A lot of people take it offensive because they think I'm not looking at the stories. For the most part, sometimes I don't know if you guys look at the stories, but I don't follow for most of the people agent stories. But I mute every single agent stories because I want to make sure, like, I want to see my clients. And I'm always putting fires, 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 whatever, right? <laughs> so now that's a way for me to follow up because they look at my stuff and they're like, okay, this guy, Oscar, is always the first one to look at my stuff. I'm telling you, 90% of the people here, I have them muted on, on, on my stories. No offense, right? No offense. But here's the thing. That's my business model to follow up with my clients because my priority, I want to see my clients first, Right? So if I, for the most part, everybody muted. So whatever my clients post something, I see my clients. So I put a fire. I put like whatever the case may be, you know? So that's one way for you to follow up. And that's, in my opinion nowadays, the most personal way to follow up with somebody. They look at what you're doing. They look at what restaurants you go to. Every time I go to a restaurant, I literally just post it and clients are like, oh damn, you're fancy, whatever, right? And then, but now they, they feel that connection with you. So that's one way to follow up as well with people. But you had a question. Yeah, it's crazy. People are on Instagram for the most part. And if I see the, uh, the green bar, I'm, I'm, I'm texting them because I know they're on Instagram at that point. You know, so questions. Oh. Well, no, Mojo, you could export it to put it into your CRM. No, that's just a dialer. I mean, it, the data get the, the data gets there, but you, you should put it on your own private one. And then you put all your numbers there and stuff like that. Yeah. I want to see if Zoom has any questions. because I've been asking people here, but not through Zoom call. Give me a second. Talk to me. Offering what? Yeah, what that, do you think about that? that's I, I do have an inspector who actually offer that. Yeah, that's one way to do it, but sometimes you don't want to remember inspectors, there's always something that's gonna come up, right? And the inspection. So you don't want to give them too much information because you want to leave it to the seller. Yeah. But you should tell them you that's should a good thing to offer. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, anybody has questions on Zoom? Hold up. Yeah. On the chat. Oh, damn, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> what if we ask for a time frame, but then they say at that point they're not interested in working with an agent? What's your... What if they ask for a time frame, but they said at that point they're not interested with a real estate agent? 
Um, so whenever they tell you they're not interested on in working with a real estate agent any time frame, you're pretty much just ask them, um, is there any specific reason why you don't feel comfortable working with a real estate agent, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to know what, what's their biggest fear. Some of them might tell you, look, I had a bad experience with a real estate agent. So now you piggyback of why you stand out differently than the other person. But you tell them, look, in the event that you happen to hire a real estate agent at some point, I would like to get to know you. So by the time you're ready, you know, you already got to meet somebody who's going to help you uh, in, in the future process. Somebody asked, like, if they say they don't have a time frame, so... Somebody said, well, that's way too long. Uh, I don't know if I should answer that. <laughs> oh, damn. Hold up. That's a whole essay. Hold up. I can't even see this. What? Oh, sorry. Wait, that's way better. <laughs> I've been texting with a person by owner and I have offerings for assistance with a home sale. But never came out straight to me that I would like to visit your house. So I just tried to find it and ask her why her time for it to sign. She will be willing to hire a broker. She told me she never got into that time, but it's not a life issue. It's not too much. Wait a minute, the second thing that I would like to do is she So she's pretty much asking me when is the best time for her to follow up. Because she just literally tried what I, I was just saying, asking them what's the time frame. Um, I'll call her tomorrow. <laughs> now, at that point, to be honest, if you're texting that person and that person is giving a lot of pushback, I'll personally door knock it. I'll, I'll go to it. Hey, look, I happen to be in the area. So at that point, you're at the listing presentation. So pretty much you're just flipping the coin because if she's already being a little pushback, at least you have a little chance to get to know you, you know? And then what if they keep shooting down right there? Is that is there like a way that you kind of like take away the back? Look, let's be honest. Like there's leads that you got, you want to throw to the garbage, right? So then you're not going to convert every single lead. So there's leads that you eventually want to follow up with them. But I mean, if somebody's like an a-hole right away with you, you're not going to work with that person, right? So don't waste your time. That's why you have all these options to so call, call, door knock and every single type of things to do. So that way you could do it every single day. So there's not a specific way. Nobody else has a question. Oh, how do you get the seller's number for expired listings? You could get it through Mojo and all the Vulcan 7, Red X. So all that information, you could get it on the dialers or Remind. Yeah. So, but Mojo is the best way to get everything. Yeah. Questions? Nobody has questions. Are you? For which is specific, Darna? Because every, everything's different, though. For which one? Pizzle. So pretty much like you set up, here's, a, here's another thing with scripts, right? You never want to leave open-ending questions. You never want to ask the owner, hey, when would you like to talk again? Because they're going to tell you no, or they're going to tell you, I'll talk to you later. Be like, look, are you available to, I, I would like to come back just to give you a, another follow-up conversation. Can I see you tomorrow at five o'clock or Tuesday at five? So you put you put the time frame, you know? You know, because if you leave that open-ending question, it's like, when can I see you? They're going to say no, or they're going to say, oh, look, I'll let you know. And at that point, you're pretty much, you know, you lost the opportunity to meet them again. So the most important thing with these people, you got to tell them when to meet them. You give them two options all the time, right? It'd be like, hey, look, I would like to have a, a second conversation with you where we could go over what we just spoke about. Can I see you Monday at 5 o'clock or Tuesday at 7? So now they feel like that pressure. Be like, oh, I'll see you at 7 o'clock, whatever they can do. Like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. You always want to say, like, when we list the house, when we sell the house, like, you always want to have that conversation with them so they already feel like they're working with you, you know. You got to talk with confidence. So you you want to talk like you already got the listing, so. Yeah. 
something with a client. I mean, there was the same back back in the days that you should have two appointments. I don't do it. I think you guys do two appointments, right? Or no? Not really. Like, you know, back in the days, people used to say, you go to the listing appointment and then you come back again for signatures and whatever. So when, when I used to be a Wiker, the, the system was that you have a two, two appointment. You get to know them first and then you come back. My opinion, in that time frame, anything could happen. So you shouldn't be having a second appointment. You should be able to convert that person on the spot. And like, and at that point, if you don't have the paperwork, look, I I'm going to email you all the information by tonight. We're going to go over everything. But for the most part, I used to have all my listing paperwork in my car, and I used to sign on the same day. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It should be. It should be once. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people preview houses. Yeah. A lot of people preview stuff, get to know them, they come back. Anything could happen in that time frame. So you shouldn't have two two appointments. You should do it the first day. Because by the time you come to the second appointment, I'm coming in and I'm going to take your list. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you should just either you should have. You should. I mean, you should. Yeah. Like a lot of people say, look, let me let me go make the comes. You're already killing yourself at that point. You're stabbing yourself at the back on the back because you don't know the market. So you should be able to tell everything on the spot. And you should be able to get an answer the same day. Yeah. I list literally. I list if I know my market, I already come accurate on my my numbers. If for some reason I messed up, I called them. Hey, look, matter of fact, I just saw something. Maybe we had to reduce a little bit by 40K, whatever the case may be. But for the most part, I personally am accurate on my numbers. Like I always, literally always accurate. She, she had a question. Okay. I have a question. I think we're both the, um, the board testing the code. Yeah. 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 But pretty, but, yeah. 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 You, you should be accurate. Like, you, if you know, if you know, here's the thing if you're calling, yeah. If, you, if you're calling, you, you probably have time to make your research and there's no need for you to come back. But if you're door knocking, you should be able to know that, that second of what you're talking about. Because, for example, all my builders, if you know what you're talking about, like, how much do you think I can sell this for? I'm not going to be like, um, I'll come back to you tomorrow. Like, at that point, hey, man, you know, you could probably get this now in between 900, just an example, 900 and a million. That's a $100,000 gap, but you could work with those numbers. But you should be able to know what you're saying, you know. Basically, I'm sorry, um, yeah. if you're going to knock, uh, let's see, you're going to knock this speaker today. Yeah. You're going to do a research about the property before you knock. Not that house is but you should look what's sold in the area, right? Yeah. So it's like if you're going to door knock, see goggles, right? Just make sure what you see, okay, two families are going for 600, 700, one family is 450, 500. So you just keep that in mind. So now when you're door knocking, you already know, have an idea of what it could be. If you happen to have, Somebody asks you, oh, how much you think my house is worth? You know? I'm not yes. I'm going to buy you up and you kind of lost it when you said that. You door knock, you come prepared, X, Y, Z, but follow up the same day. Like you, you said, you don't get the list of the list. You don't get the list of the list. Yeah. 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 You kind of lost it too. As far as. As far as like. Yeah, I like the other one. I'm going to give you the opportunity to door knock. The, the chances of you getting a listing the same day that you're doing is 1%, not even 0.2, right? So the follow-up should be that easy. That's where it's at. You text and hey, look, it was a pleasure meeting you today. And you start, it depends on the lead. If the lead is somebody that eventually told you, yeah, I want to sell in two months from now, that becomes your A category, right? So now you already know you got to follow every two days. And every two days, hey, look, um, I just want to let you know that I just listed this house in the area. An example, that's a quick follow-up. 
and they just kind of do it every two days. That's that's my method. Some people might do it once a week. Some people might do it every three days, right? But my method is every two days when it comes to the A category. So it all depends on the lead. It doesn't, and look, all this, it's like buyers, right? You might have buyers that they just like looking at properties onto an opportunity or rises, right? You're, you're not going to show them houses every day. You might show them houses every two weeks or something like that. So same thing with listings. So you had a question. Okay. Yeah. Other ways to get listings, and so I can because I know I think it was supposed to be an hour, right? Social media, um, educate your followers. I personally hate when somebody's saying, Hey, look, I saw this a hundred thousand over. Is who you hire, like, <laughs> like. I was like, you shouldn't, that's like, just that's to brag between realtors, but a client is going to be like, oh my God, another realtor saying that they're number one. So in my opinion, it's like, talk about the property that you sold and tell a story about the house, in my opinion, right? In my opinion, like most of the people are going to look at oh, another top realtor saying that they're number one. So educate your followers, talk about inspections, talk about whatever happened with that property specifically. Uh, another way to get listings, I did this once. It became really expensive uh, based on a, on a company that I hire. Create like a little website where you promote it on social media where you could put evaluate your house. So it's going to be an ad that if somebody saw it, they're going to be like, I want to see how, how much is my house worth. So they're going to fill in the information and you're going to get that lead in your database. You know, so uh, I used to spend a lot of money or some of them, they used to charge me per lead. I think it was like fifty dollars per lead. At some point, at some point, I was getting like five hundred people, and uh, that becomes expensive. My credit card was maxed out, but that's one way to get listed because if people are putting in their information that they want to know how much of their house is worth, you might get that lead into your CRM, and then potentially it's a listing, you know. And then what I said before, add your leads on social media. So I don't give business cards. Most of my clients are on my social media. I add all my builders, all my developers, or whoever the case may be on my Instagram or Facebook so they could see what I actually do. That's one of the easiest ways for you to follow up and get listings for the most part, you know? So you should have a business card. I don't, but, you know, that's my way to do it. Sphere influence, don't forget about these people. So that's why I put do not forget about them and follow up. Because a lot of people forget that the neighbor or their family member, they know you're a realtor. It has happened a lot of times, right? Your own family members forget about you and they list the property with somebody else. So don't forget about the people that you know and you should follow with those people. Questions, doubt. That's my contact. Yeah, I could give you guys. Any questions? I mean, statement. Just one thing that first of all, the thank you. Thank you guys.